Hey guys, what's up? This is ETSKI Tutorials, and this is FPS 1.14. So this episode, we're going to learn how to make a timer for the bullet holes to destroy the bullet holes after a certain amount of time. So if we're shooting bullets for a long time, the player's in the scene for a while, and they keep on shooting bullets, after a while, there's going to be a lot of bullet holes uh, scattered around the place, and that's going to slow our game down after a while. After you know, 100 bullet holes or 1,000 bullet holes, the game might start to chug a little bit. So what we need to do is destroy them after a certain amount of time. So basically what we're going to do is just create a little script that we're going to attach to each bullet hole or, or the uh, bullet hole prefab um, so that once the bullet holes are created, they start a timer um, and it'll destroy itself after a certain amount of time and we get to define what that amount of time is so we can come up with a balance of what causes good performance in the game and what actually looks good and not only that we're gonna create a little bit of a randomization onto the timer uh, so that not all the bullet holes uh, destroy themselves after the exact same amount of time because what you'll notice is let's say you take your machine gun and go and you create a line of bullet holes along the wall but what's gonna happen after 10 seconds or whatever you set the timer to is they're gonna start destroying themselves like in a perfect line and it it looks kinda weird so we're gonna add a little bit of randomization so that they start disappearing here and there um, just so that it um, is a little bit less noticeable so like the player is probably gonna notice uh, the bullet holes if they start destroying themselves and like all of a sudden there's a line of bullet holes just goes and like disappears but if like you know one disappears and they see it out of the corner of their eye they might kinda forget about it um, so that's where the randomization comes in and tries and it's just an attempt to uh, make it a little bit less noticeable when the bullet holes disappear another way we can make it a little less noticeable noticeable is to just make it a really long timer like let's say we made it three minutes per bullet hole plus a randomization of one minute uh, the player is probably gonna go off and do something else and they're not gonna be watching those bullets and watching for them to disappear um, so that's what we're gonna do to destroy the bullets and it's a pretty simple script so let's get started pull open my text file oh okay so here's a couple of notes about the last episode um, some things that I forgot um, so these are some things I forgot in the code I actually uh, as I was screen recording I forgot to put the code in place that actually destroys the uh, bullet after it's shot um, so that was causing some lag issues and what was also causing some lag issues is that I actually had a collider still on the bullet holes so just like when you create a uh, primitive cube it comes with a cube collider on it um, the plane the 2d square also comes with a collider on it and we don't need colliders on bullet holes and colliders can take a little bit of processing power especially if you have a bunch of them overlapped on top of each other um, so we need to j just turn the collider off on the bullet hole prefab and that fixes the problem and that makes the game run a whole lot smoother um, so I will during the screen recording I'll quickly show you how to do those two things hopefully I won't forget this time um, and let's move on to the actual variables that we're going to be using for this episode inside of a new script that we're going to call destroy after time script um, so the first variable is time to destroy so this is the amount of time we want to take it to actually destroy the bullet hole. So this can, and this is going to be measured in number of seconds. So if we want them to get destroyed after 10 seconds, uh, we'd set this number to 10. If we want them to be destroyed after a minute, we'd set this number to 60. Two minutes, 120. Three minutes, 180, and so on and so forth. Okay, and then next we have time to destroy randomization. So what this number is going to be um, is a number, uh, it's going to be a random number added on to time to destroy, and this number is going to be between zero and whatever we actually set the value of this to. So if we set it to a value of one, it's going to add on to time to destroy um, anywhere between zero and 60 seconds. So this will give us a nice randomization cushion so that uh, the bullet holes don't disappear in a completely linear fashion and it's a little bit more random and harder to spot. Um, and then we have variable count to time. Um, so this is going to be a timer that we're going to count up from zero and once it is larger than time to destroy plus the uh, time to destroy randomization it's going to um, destroy itself so yeah let's get to the code all right so here is destroy after time script and the first thing we're gonna do is create a function on awake or on or function awake 
function. So basically this uh, little bit of code is going to be called when the bullet hole is created. And what uh, this little bit of code is going to do is time to destroy plus equals random dot value times time to, uh, time to destroy randomization. So uh, what this function here is, all right, first of all, random is a class. So to get any kind of random number, you're going to access the class random. And with inside of random is the variable value. So whenever you access uh, the variable value inside of the random class, it's going to give you a number between 0 and 1. Uh, and this is always going to be a random number. So uh, between the value of all right, so if you know any number times 0 is going to be 0, and any number times 1 is going to be itself, and then anywhere in between. So when we multiply this number that's going to be randomly between 0 and 1 and multiply it by this number here, it's going to end up giving us a number between 0 and the number time to destroy randomization. And then we are just adding that on top of time to destroy. So now time uh, to destroy is going to be randomly a little bit longer uh, depending on the random value that is added to time to destroy for each different bullet hole. So they all get destroyed after a slightly different amount of time. And now we have inside of the function update. Um, we first of all we have the count to time is going to well by default um, if we don't assign a value it's just going to be zero so we don't need to assign a value and it's going to count up from zero using time dot delta time so we're adding the number of seconds since the last frame so basically this equation that I have highlighted here is going to um, count up at a value of one per second so basically it's a stopwatch it's just going to keep on counting up and now we have an if statement that says if count to time is larger than or equal to time to destroy. Now remember time to destroy is going to be the number that we assigned it plus a random value based on the variable time to destroy randomization. Um, so if it's a larger than or equal to count to time, I mean if count to time is larger than or equal to time to destroy, we're going to destroy the game object. So that's all the code that we need uh, to destroy the bolt holes after a certain amount of time. So this will hopefully just keep our game running a little bit smoother. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. So I'm going to cut the green screen and I'm going to go on to Unity and show you how to do that inside of Unity. All right, here we are inside of Unity. And the first thing I want to do is go over those things that I mentioned that I forgot to do in the last video. And the first one is to get rid of the collider on the bullet hole. So right here we have the uh, empty game object that is the parent of the bullet hole in the actual plane that is the bullet hole and as you can see we have a mesh collider with a mesh of plane attached to it and we don't need any kind of collision detection for our bullet holes so let's go ahead and turn that off we can either uncheck it here or we can go over here and actually click remove component so the next thing I want to do is to add a little something to the bullet script right here after our whole if statement with the raycast and that is destroy oops lowercase game object because we need to destroy or the bullet so it's not just sitting around wasting space so now if I run the game it should run a whole lot faster and yeah, as you can see, the bullets are appearing a whole lot more smoothly and I can shoot a lot of bullets before it even begins to lag. So, yep, those are the things I forgot to mention in the last episode. So let's go into how to destroy the bullet holes after a certain amount of time. So the first thing we need to do is create a new JavaScript and let's call this destroy after time script and let's go ahead and apply that to the parent of the of the bullet hole because we don't want to apply it to the plane that's the bullet hole because that would just destroy the plane and we'd still have an empty game object sitting around so we might as well destroy both so we're going to put it on the parent because when you destroy a parent it will also destroy the child so let's open up the script and let's put our variables in place. The first one was, what was it? 
destroy after time. And let's go ahead and set that to a value of, I don't know, 30 seconds. And next we have our destroy after time randomization. I don't know if randomization is actually a real word. Oops. And for now, let's have that have a default value of zero and we can add more to it later. And now we have, uh, was it var? Actually, let's first add the at hide in inspector because we don't need to see this one. Var count to time float. And we don't need to assign a value to that because the default value is zero and we want it to start at zero. So this is our function update. So the first thing we should do is our function awake. And the only line of code we have inside a function awake is time, wait, oh no, it was destroy after time plus equal, and then inside of parentheses, random dot value and value is lowercase because it's actually a variable and oh wait no it's not inside of parentheses I was thinking of a different line of code so random dot value times destroy after time randomization so now we are just adding a number to destroy after time that is between zero and and destroy after time randomization. Now we have function update and I'm going to have count oops, to time plus equal time dot delta time. So that is going to just count up from zero at a, a rate of one per second. So now we have if count to time is more than or equal to destroy after time we are going to destroy oops lowercase game object now let's save that and let's go into unity and it's applied so 30 seconds let's change it to something smaller for our case just so that we don't need to wait around to see if it's working so I'm shooting and it's been about three seconds and there you go they're destroying themselves but you can definitely see that uh, effect where you can just see the line of them doing that and it's very very noticeable so now let's add some randomization to that. So why don't we set the randomization to three. Now if we set these both to larger numbers it should be even less noticeable. But now the bullets should be destroying themselves anywhere in between three and six seconds and as you can see it's a little bit more smooth and a little bit more hard to notice. They're kind of fading away more randomly and it's a little less, you know, it's a little less hard or easy to notice. So let's set these to a larger number. Um, let's both, actually let's do 20 plus 10. So now it'll take them 20 seconds plus a random amount between 0 and 10 to destroy themselves. And I'm just going to shoot a bunch. And... Let's wait and see if any of them start destroying themselves. They should be destroying themselves by now. There it goes. See, that's pretty hard to notice. It's, it's very subtle the way they're disappearing. For the most part, it's pretty subtle. It'd be even more subtle if you set it to a larger amount, because most players aren't going to stick behind and actually watch the bullet holes disappear. So we can set these numbers to more like, I don't know, 
three minutes for time to destroy and a minute for, let's see, what's three minutes? Uh, 180. And we'll set this to like a minute. So I'm not going to stick around to see if these numbers look good because that would just be a really long video because I don't want to sit around for three minutes to wait for these bullet holes to destroy themselves. But uh, yeah, that's how to make the bullet holes destroy themselves after a certain amount of time plus a little bit of randomization to make sure it's a little bit less noticeable. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Keep making games.